Hey everyone, welcome back from the weekend. It's the 9th of August, everyone. Ainsley News, pure gold. Negative interest rates coming for Australia. For a pretty good run, but things are looking a bit different in the coming months. There is a growing view by economists that Australia will experience a double-dip recession over Q3 and Q4 of this year, with the latest from CBA calling for a 2.7% contraction in Q3. A recession is two consecutive quarters and with the New South Wales expected to stay in lockdown until mid-November, as CBA's base case, and the likelihood of continued but hopefully shorter lockdowns in other states, Q4 seems a real possibility after such a plunge in Q3. This chart we're going to show you next puts that single quarter, negative 2.7, into context with the entire 1990s recession being only negative 1.7%. Here's that chart here showing 1980 to present percentage of GDP. While most are talking Q3 and Q4, NAB last week predicted there could be a shock negative print for Q2 to yet to be released. This from the AFR. NAB's assessment stems from a fall in export volumes over the quarter, primarily iron ore, which is unlikely to offset by an increase in inventories because the slowing stemmed from production and not shipping. Regardless, there is no doubt about what is coming. And the fact that there is debate about whether Q2 will be negative or positive tells you the extent of the misguided Everything is awesome narrative. Indeed, so poor is the outlook that our banking regulator, APRA, was telling our banks to prepare for negative interest rates before Sydney even went into lockdown. We've shared before the tight correlation between the gold price and negative yield in government bonds. Central bank negative rates are not a new thing. The UE, or the EU, sorry, has held rates negative for some time, and the likes of Japan, Switzerland, and Denmark for many years. Earlier this year, the Bank of England also warned its banks to prepare for, to implement negative interest rates. The theory goes that if you have to pay the bank for the privilege of holding your cash, then you will be more likely to want to go out and spend it in the economy, or of course, further expand the property and share market bubbles by investing it there. That Japan has been doing it so long with little benefit should warn you of its effectiveness. What Japan does have to show for it though, is the world's highest debt per population. Also, what has been clear from the Euro implementation is that it is damaging to banks as well as it turns their business model on its head. Further to our news on Friday, CBA are warning of 300,000 lost jobs in Sydney alone due to the lockdown, and NAV have cost already at around $16 billion. However, in stark contrast to that news on Friday, if we do go into negative interest rates, that could be an impetus for even higher house prices, as outlined previously. That could have two such opposing outcomes put forward by intelligent analysts it highlights the unbalanced nature of our current economy. The US market highlighted this on Friday night, our time. The US non-farm payrolls saw a monster print of 943,000 new jobs, way in excess of expectations. That saw gold, silver and bonds hit hard and the US dollar rise. That nearly two thirds of these new jobs were reopening jobs in hospitality and teaching just as the US starts to reel now in the face of Delta, was not part of the narrative. Probably the key takeaway was that no one seems to really know what the future holds. For us mere mortals, needing to decide where to invest our hard-earned wealth, that is cold comfort. You must, however, on any dispassionate assessment, see one thing appears certain, and that is the monetary stimulus will continue. CBA and the above assessment don't see rates rising now until May 2023. One of the tightest correlations, despite any of the above scenarios, is gold's link to negative real rates. Whether official rates go negative or not, inflation subtracted from the current near zero or a future negative rate is still well and truly, firmly and unprecedentedly negative. Well, that's news for today. Thanks for joining us. Remember, ainsleybullion.com.au if you're after the physical stuff, gold, silver and platinum. Jump over to ainsleywealth.com.au for all things cryptocurrency. We've seen a massive, well, massive by some standards, jump in Ethereum, Bitcoin, and a few other uh, high cap currencies there just over the weekend. Jump in, have a look at how much it's bounced. It's a good opportunity to buy. Jump on that trend. Or check out our own cryptocurrency built and backed by real gold and real silver. Nice and portable and securely stored at Reserve Vault. That's goldsilverstandard.com. Enjoy your Monday and week, everyone. And we'll catch you tomorrow for more news.